Oh God. <laughs> this piece of work of a tank. Jesus. All right, all right, folks. We have beaten around the bush way too damn long. So let's quickly review the KV-1SA with all the hidden stats, the armor profiles, and everything in between. So you already know it's a premium stock KV-1S with a Russian auto reloader. So six rounds for the 76 millimeter with one shell dealing 110 alpha. So practically 660 alpha burst in the matter of five seconds. Yeah, that's not toxic at all. <laughs> it's a nuclear fallout pit. Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine a newbie playing a tier 4 against this vehicle. Now stop imagining it because you'll puke and throw the controller at the keyboard or <laughs> throw the keyboard at the screen and throw everything at everything. <laughs> god. It's not toxic at all. So it looks like a KV-1S with reduced side armor, obviously compared to the KV-1. Elongated turret for the auto reloader, but you're still having the 5-man crew, so still having safe stowage and intuition and stuff, but looks like a German-esque of a commander cupola on top, a little bit, like with the Panzer IVs. Huh, interesting. But yeah. KV-1s, we have like four or five of them at tier 5. <laughs> we need more of it, but funny enough, I think Wargaming stopped making tier 6 or below premium tanks for regular sales. So they usually put them into holiday ops. And I'm guessing this vehicle will be in holiday ops, like with the KV-1S or KV-1 shielded that type of S, but alright, it's a proposed mechanized 5 variation of the loading system for Soviet combat vehicles, but it's a paper tank, so supposed design, and we'll probably see a T-34S or something, <laughs> oh no, oh, yeah, no please, gross, alright, firepower wise, uh, 120 alpha or 120 millimeters of pin, 110 alpha, so lower alpha compared to the 85, but obviously 76 millimeter. First shell will take about four seconds. Last shell will take about 8.6, so the spread will take you about 37 seconds to fully reload all six shells into the magazine. Accuracy is Russian 0.43. Aim time is actually faster than the KV-1 shielded, surprisingly, I think. But Alpha is about the same as the KV-1 shielded, so give or take. 5 degrees of gun depression, 25 elevation. Turret traverse speed is actually fast, surprisingly, for a KV-1. Usually it's about 20-ish. And DPM is alright, 1700, so not that bad, but... Let's take a look at dispersion for traverse and stuff, just to be sure. So 0.24 for moving and tank traverse, that is kind of bad, but then again comparing it with like KV-1s, it's a, it's a little bit better than KV-1, so not surprising. Lower tiers usually don't have that good of an accuracy shooting while moving and traversing the turret compared to high tiers, but uh, less DPM compared to the KV-1, the 85mm, but you do have a faster shell because it's AP, uh, APCR and better APCR for gold shell with just better penetration. And that's it. Huh. Spam all the gold shell in the world. <laughs> <sighs> it's alright of a gun, it's just so devastating to tier 4s. Like, really devastating. Well, let's take a look at the armor. So, 800 health. Slightly below average compared to a KV-1. But, it's obviously a KV-1S. So, 75 at the hull front. We're using a 120mm with 200mm of pin. That is pretty good at tier 5. So, we're not going to do that. Let's use a 75mm with about 
110 millimeters of pin. So shooting the upper plate will bounce mm, half of the time. Middle of the plate, yeah, could bounce if you angle it, but turret front, it's rounded, so shoot the cheeks, you'll likely pin. Mantlet is somewhat weak, so shoot the middle of the mantlet or shoot the commander cupola on top. If you miss the shot, it will likely bounce. Uh, you could jam a shell into the shot trap beneath the mantlet, so that might be good, but lower plate has always been the weak spot for the KV-1s, so shoot the lower plate. Uh, don't shoot the beak of the hull, so this is the thickest, about 110, 113-ish. Mm, it's alright of a heavy tank armor, you don't expect much at lower tiers, but side scraping with 60 millimeters of 20 millimeter track, still decent at lower tiers, but always angle your vehicle, always angle. Eh, it's a KV-1S, obviously. Side of the turret is only 82, so nothing to expect too much. Engine deck, 30. Top of the turret, 30. So high explosive from artillery does hurt. It's alright of armor. Comparing it with the KV-1, it's slightly weaker side armor, but frontal armor is about the same. So nothing really too bad. Quote unquote. So KV-1. I mean KV-1 has decent armor for tier 5. But middle of the hull, 81. Uh, lower plate, about 92. Mm. It's, you still have to angle it. But 75mm for the sides is still pretty good for tier 5. So always side scrape. Especially with the KV-1s. Matlet is stronger on the KV-1, and there's no Commander Cupola, so more weak spots for the KV-1S A version. Let's see about the shielded. I think the shielded has better middle plate. Slightly better with space armor for the middle plate and for the side of the turret, but it's not as well rounded anymore. So even though it doesn't have the space armor, for the regular KV-1, it is rounded, so technically that's still better than the space armor. And the middle of the mantlet is still pretty goddamn weak for the KV-1 shielded. So obviously, the auto-reloader is better armored, somewhat, than the KV-1 shielded, in terms of the turret. And the lower plate and the beak is about the same, surprisingly. Side armor is... Not as good, but hey, you take some, you give some, especially with the auto reloader system. <laughs> all right, all right, let's see how slow or how fast this vehicle is. It weighs about 40, uh, 43, 44 tons, so a little bit lighter than the KV-1, slightly, but about 11.4 horsepower per ton ratio. 43 kilometers per hour top speed, 14 reverse. Actually, not bad. Hull traverse is also pretty decent for a heavy tank, 35.5 ish. Uh, terrain resistance, heavy tank, but effective top speed is only 33. So you'll achieve that top speed of 43 going down a hill or being pushed or something. But um, let's see, KV1 shielded. Well, better effective top speed, obviously, better terrain resistance, except for hard, and better horsepower per ton ratio. So, it's a little bit more nimble, especially for hull traverse. So, effective traverse is a lot faster. This thing could move the gun and move the hull a lot more nimbly than you would, you would expect out of a KV-1. So, don't be surprised that this thing could snapshot you while turning the vehicle and the hull. But, <clears throat> camo wise, eh, no camo, nothing to talk about there. And 330 meters of view range, which is actually better than the KV-1 by like 20 or 30. Let's see. Uh, better than 20 and 30 in the case of the shielded KV-1. Radio is also better <laughs> than all the KV-1s and the 220, but oh god. 
All right. It's it has lower health. Yes, has a weaker ammo rack compared to the KV-1 shielded, but a better fuel tank. Huh. That's interesting. Weighs less, of course. Better view range, better radio, a lot better radio. But let's see. What? KV-1 has such a weak ammo rack health and fuel tank health. Interesting. So pretty brittle. What about the 220? Yeah, it's about the same compared to the 220. Uh, Churchill? Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, gross. Uh, same ammo rack health, weaker uh, fuel tank health on the Churchill, but yeah, surprisingly not that half bad in terms of module health. Uh, shell cost the same as the KV-1 shielded because of the same gun, but this thing has an auto reloader. Hmm. Yep. Originally, I rated this vehicle 8 out of 10 if it's top tier. You obviously see why. Freaking <laughs> auto reloader with no drawbacks against a bunch of tomatoes or newbies. You, When you finish the clip, all you have to do is wait 3.5 seconds with a effective crew with Brothers in Arms and Vince. You wait about 3.5 or 3.6 seconds for the next shell. Even if you don't clip out somebody, the next shell won't take too long. And it has decent dispersion as you saw with moving the traverse of the hull and turret. Wow. I mean, let's talk about equipment. So, I will probably put the similar um, equipments with the KV-1s, but vents. Since it cannot put a rammer, I will probably put improve aiming, so help out with the accuracy, obviously. Uh, Vince already said, um, there is no vertical stabilizer at tier 5, so that's out of the question. Ah, crap. Um, you don't really need enhanced gun lane drive, in my opinion, even though you have about 2.7, uh, 2.47 uh, to about 2.2 with a good crew. But, oh, this is the KV-1. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> you idiot. Yeah, 2.4. Let's do the equipment on the actual page. I'm, a be I'm being a dumbass. All right, so let's actually put Vince. Um, oh, you cannot pick the, the bonus. It doesn't apply. So there's no choices of the equipment with a particular set. Of bonuses like with higher tiers so that's out of the question all right um improve aiming to help out with the accuracy uh last equipment you could go for more health to just be a little bit more tanky you could go with a better turbocharger to go with better engine power or additional grousers to help out with the uh, terrain resistance all good choices um i don't think you need optics lower tier isn't as competitive in a sense for optics so this thing might be too elitist of equipment definitely not these two these two are horrible definitely not this no <laughs> you you're not a scout um i don't think you need a small liner artillery at low tier isn't as effective unless you stay out in the open without moving so i wouldn't pick small liner um traverse is actually fast compared to the kv1 so this is out of the question enhanced gun lane drive is Kind of superfluous, unless you're taking your time with the shells, but that's kind of unwise since it's only one second between each shot, so this might be out of the question. So I would choose one of these three. Maybe more health, just to be more annoying. <laughs> so with more health, about 70 more health. You can also go with the turbocharger, and that will improve your... Horsepower per ton ratio by a little bit, as well as traverse, and everything in between. Yeah. Give or take, or grousers. Hmm. Whoop. Yeah, grousers. They don't show you, but. Yeah, let's go to um, tanks.gg. Uh, vents. Yeah, and it's gun lane, or aiming. And grousers. Ooh. Grousers will really help 
the top speed and effective traverse, so making this more nimble. Um, as much as engine power boost? Not as much as, or better than engine power boost, so you do rev up pretty quickly, but ah, it's a choice between you and uh, how you play. Like I said, <laughs> 8 out of 10 if it's top tier. Bottom tier, you're still annoying <laughs> with a 660 alpha burst, but you have to hide behind a IS or Tiger 1 or something, or T29 that got nerfed, but... Ah, 6.5 if it's bottom tier. 8 out of 10 if it's top tier. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a premium, so it makes more credit and crew XP. Wonderful. Well, there you go, folks. The freaking <sighs> nuclear fallout pit that is this vehicle. It's not toxic. It's super toxic. It's irradiated toxicness. God, you love to be a newbie fighting one of this, like a tier 4 or tier 5. So let's see how much average health a tier 4 has. 560. Yeah, you'll, you'll die. Light tanks, 500. Tank destroyers, 400. Matildas, 570. Uh, Sherman prototype, 540. Yeah, you'll clip out tier 4. What about tier 5s? Tier 5 medium tanks, barely has more health. Not really. Uh, don't talk about heavy tanks. You, you, I mean, still, you can go up against a heavy tank. Just take two more shells or so. But you'll kill a Panzer IV, which has a lot of health already. Not the not the original Tier 5 Premiums. Tier 5 Premiums has a buttload of health. Especially with crap like this. <laughs> God. So, original Premium Tier 5s have a lot of health. Not the newer premium tier 5s, but we're out of the question. Don't talk about tank destroyers, we'll kill these very quickly. Oh, yeah, so everything other than premium tier 5s or heavy tanks of tier 5. I mean, 660 alpha in 5 seconds is no joke <laughs> at tier 5. That's the same health of all tank destroyers. Or more. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Super talks. Well, there you go, folks. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. And, uh, I mean, I'll be glad if this is a consolation prize in loot boxes or holiday ops. Large boxes. So, it's not that bad of a grab compared to something like a M4 with a T-34 turret. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Yeah, give this thing an auto-reloader and we'll talk. Come on, give this thing an auto reloader. Next year, you'll see a T-34-57 uh, with the auto reloader. Yeah, this gun with the the peanut throwing rapid damage machine gun of a cannon, the 57mm. Give this thing 10 shell in the clip and one second between each shot. There you go. 850 alpha burst. <laughs> It'll be even more toxic. I'm waiting, Wargaming. Make this happen. T-34S or T-34... Uh, whatever you call this thing. A version. T-34A. <laughs> God. Well, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.